Welcome to edusathi.com, your partner in education. In this lecture, we'll discuss the concept of etymology. Before we move further, let us discuss what exactly does etymology mean. Etymology is the study of the origin of words and it discusses how the meanings of these words have changed over the period of time. In simple words, etymology is the study of the origin of words and it focuses on understanding the word roots. In the junior classes, we used to study the concept of prefixes and suffixes. Etymology is an extension to this very concept. It focuses on breaking a word into smaller parts and then interpreting the meaning of this word based on our understanding of these smaller parts known as roots. For example, the word compare may be broken into two small parts, come and par. Come means together, and par means equality. Thus, compare means when certain things are kept together and the equality of these things is checked. Thus, we can say that we can break the word compare into two small roots and then interpret the meaning of this word based on our understanding of these roots. We start our discussion with the very first root as ego. Whenever someone uses the word ego, the first thing that strikes our head is the pompous and condescending behavior exhibited by certain people. The word root ego basically means self or I. Thus, any word which has ego as its root would certainly have to do something with self or I. Thus, egoist is any person who thinks about himself. It would be very beneficial for us to know that any word that ends in IST becomes an adjective. Thus, Egoist is an adjective for someone who keeps himself prior to other people. Then what do we call such a person who believes in bragging about himself? We call such a person as egotist. Egotist is one that person who is habitual of talking and bragging on himself. Such a person may also be known as a braggart. Or show off. We may also call such a person as pompous. That is, a person who likes to talk about himself and flaunt about himself. Or we may call such a person as ostentatious. Since ostentation means wealth, thus ostentatious behavior is when someone shows off his wealth or power in front of others. The next word that we may discuss here is egocentric. Egocentric
egocentric is the person who thinks himself to be at the center of the universe. The word is made of two roots, ego, which means self, and centric, which means center. Thus, egocentric is any person who would come and meet you only if he seeks some or the other profit from you. We all know that mania of anything is the obsession of that very thing. For example, dyspomania. It is the obsession of drinking alcohol. Likewise, kleptomania is the obsession of stealing things. And obsession of anything is bad. Thus, egomania is the obsession of self. And I said, mania of anything is bad. Thus, egomania is a negative word. It is used for such people who may pose threat to others if they sense harm. To give you an example, we may say all the villains and vamps of the Bollywood movies or Hindi soap operas are egomaniacs. The next word root that we may discuss is alter. Alter means to change. Alter means other. Thus, any word that has alter as a root would certainly have something or the other to do with change or another thing. We usually get our clothes altered. Thus, alteration means to change. Altering the clothes means to change their shape or size. Altering the written text means to change whatever is written in those texts. Another word that we all are aware of such uh, of alter is alternative, which means the substitute. Altercation is a very noisy quarrel between two or more people. It is when people are into a fight with each other. It does not involve the use of physical force, but it basically is a fight between certain number of people using verbal abuse. As I said that any word it which ends in IST becomes an adjective. Thus altruist is any person who lives for others. This is made of two roots, alter, which means other, and IST makes it an adjective. A person who has devoted his life for benefit of others is an altruist, for example, Mother Teresa or Nelson Mandela. As yet, we have discussed two roots, alter and ego. What if I join these two roots and write a word as alter ego? By our discussion, we know that alter means other and ego means self. Thus, alter ego means other self. To define alter ego, I would say that alter ego is any person who is the mirrored, mirror image of someone else. For example, if you and your best friend have similar likes and similar dislikes, you think and behave alike, you both are alter egos of each other.
By our discussion till now, we have come to know that all the words may be broken into two or more smaller roots and we may interpret the meanings of such roots. Now let's carry our discussion further and discuss certain roots which are usually used in many words. For example, logic, which means the study. Any word that ends in logic talks about the study of certain or the other thing. For example, biology is made of two roots, logi and bio. Bio means life and logi is study. Thus, biology is the study of life. Likewise, geology. Geo means earth and logi is study. Thus, geology means the study of earth. Likewise, if a word starts with meso or mis, it means hatred. Thus, meso xyz means that you hate xyz. Again, if any word has phile or phil as a root, it means that you love that the other thing. For example, phile xyz would mean that you love xyz. We all know that mono means one, poly means many, and bi means two. We'll use these terminologies and try and make different words. The word root for mankind is enthro. Thus, any word that has enthro as a root would certainly have something or the other to do with mankind. What will you call such a person who loves mankind? We know that phile means love and enthro means mankind. Thus, the concept of loving mankind is known as philanthropy. And since it's being used for a person, I'll end this word in IST. And the person who loves mankind would be known as philanthropist. The study of mankind would be termed as Enthrope means mankind and the word root for study is logi. Thus, anthropology is the study of mankind. In the mankind live men and women. The word root for men is andri and the word root for women is gyni. Thus any word that has andri has some relation to men and a word that has gyni has some relation to women. We all are aware about of doctors who are known as gynecologists. These are the doctors who treat women for their problems. We can break the word gynecology and find that gynecology is made of gyne, which means a woman, and ology, which is the study. And since it's being used for the doctor, it's an adjective, we end it in IST. Thus, a doctor who studies the women problem is known as a gynecologist. Can you make a word that means a person who loves men? Now since I said a person who loves men, 
it the word will have two roots phile and andre thus a person who loves men is known as a philander what will you call a person who hates women since he hates the word will have miso and he hates women the word will have gyne thus a misogynist is the one who hates women can you think about a word which means a woman who behaves like men since here we will have to use men as a metaphor we'll place andri in front of gyne and the word that we get is androgyne which means a woman who behaves like man men and women are married and the word root for marriage is gami thus any word that has gami as a root will certainly have some relation to weddings we all are aware of the concept of marrying multiple times this practice is known as polygamy now we can interpret why because poly means many and gami means marriages thus polygamy is the practice of marrying multiple times what will you call a person who marries only once since he marries only once he marries once thus mono plus gami and since it's used for a person thus is an adjective so monogamist is the word if someone abstains from getting married the word that you will use for such a person would be now i said he abstains or averts from getting married thus he hates the concept of marriage since he hates it the word root would be miso and he hates marriages so it's gami and it's being used for a person it ends in ist the word is misogamist men and women get old and the word root for old is either gairi or snai the study of old people the study of the effects of aging is known as gerontology reason gairi is old plus ology is the study thus gerontology is the study of old people we all are we all know that senior citizens are the ones that cross the age of 65 senior comes from senile can you make a word for someone who loves old people now i said he loves old people so the two roots would be sino that is senile and phile that is love so the concept of loving old people is sino phile
the word root for children is pedus thus any word that has pedus as a root relates to children we all are aware that the doctors who treat children are known as pediatricians the reason being the word is made of two roots pedus that is a child and iatri that is medical healing thus pediatry is the field of science that studies women, studies children and treats them likewise if i place iatri with gyri and the the resultant is gyratri which is the field of medical science that relates to old people by joining many roots that we have discussed till now we can get words like anthropology which is the study of mankind philanthropy which is the love for mankind misanthrope which is the hatred for mankind gerontology which is the study of social psychological cognitive biological aspects of aging polygamy which is the practice of marrying multiple times polyandry which is the practice that women uh, practice that women follow of having many husbands misogamy which is the practice of abstaining from marriages let us discuss the personality types of people we often come across the words like introvert or extrovert personalities we break the word and find that word means direction a direction may be inwards or outwards based on this we have two personality types introvert and extrovert intro or intra means in extro means out thus introvert is any person whom we can term as a loner he likes not to be surrounded by people whereas extrovert is a highly outgoing person he is gregarious and amicable there is a mix of introvert and extrovert and the term that we get is ambivert the word root ambi means not specific thus ambivert is the personality type of the people who are selective and do not gel with all ambi may be used in many different words such as ambidextrous ambi as i said is not specific and dexter is the term used for right hand thus ambidextrous is any person who has no specific right hand which means he can work equally efficient with both his hands for example leonardo da vinci the famous painter was ambidextrous he could paint and write equally well with both his hands now that we know that a word may be broken into smaller roots we'll discuss certain commonly used roots 
and try interpret the meaning of the words that use these roots. The root Greg means flock or group. Thus, the word gregarious is used for the people who like to stay in groups. Gregarious is used for the people who are quite extrovert or amiable. Likely, the word egregious is used for the people who go against some group. This is because egregious has egg and greg. E comes from X, which is against. And Greg is to flock, that is, to form a group. Thus, egregious is when someone goes against a group. The word may also be used for the people who commit certain societal crimes, such as loot or stealing. The word segregate means to separate. This is because se means apart, and greg is the group. So when you separate the group, that is, you break the group apart, that means you are segregating the group. Again, aggregate is the sum total. Reason being, ag or egg is, means two or two words and greg is the group. It would be beneficial for us to understand that any word that starts with the prefix as A followed by any alphabet apart from AA or AB means two or two words. For example, in the word annihilation We use two roots as an and nihil. An means two, nihil is zero. Thus, when you say that the thing is annihilated, it means it is reduced to zero. Likewise, in aggregate, the things are added or the sum total is calculated. Why? Because you move these things to form a group. Again, we discuss congregate. Now, we've already said that con, com or call mean together. Thus, any word that starts with com, con or col this means together and Greg is the flock. Thus, when people come together, they congregate. This word is usually used for the religious meetings. Thus, we now know that the word root Greg means a group or a flock. And anywhere it is being used, the word has some relation to coming together and forming groups. In our discussion, we've already said that phil or phile means love. Thus, philanthropy is the love for mankind. Reason? Phile is love and anthrope 
is mankind thus philanthropy is the love for mankind again philander is someone who loves men reason being phile is love and ander or andri is a man thus philander is the concept of loving men philosophy this is one subject that relates to wisdom philosophy if broken we get two roots as philae and sophus sophus means wisdom thus philosophy is the love for wisdom philosophy as a subject discusses good and bad that is pros and cons of anything that is it discusses wisdom harmonic relates to music thus love for music would be known as phile harmonic biblio relates to bible and the word root biblio means books we all are aware of the term bibliography it is the collection of the book books that you have referred to write certain research thus bibliophile is the love for books again pedophile now we already know that pedo means a child thus pedophile should mean the love for children over the time this word has changed its meaning and evolved out to be a very negative word pedophile is a societal problem wherein children are subjected to sexual harassment thus pedophile is a negative word we've already said that ology means study likewise shean means an expert thus any word that ends in ology relates to the study and any word that ends in shean relates to an expert for example gynecology which is the study of women problems or study of women because gyne means women pediatrician as we have already said is a child specialist reason being the word is made of pedis that is a child iatri which is the medical healing and shean which is an expert so an a, an expert who practices the medical healing of children is a pediatrician likewise obstetrician is a person who helps in the delivery of children he may also be known as a midwife midwife is a person who helps in delivery of babies optician is made of optics that relates to sight 
and Sheehan is an expert. So the expert of eyesight is an optician. Musician, an expert of music. Physician, an expert of physical science. That is the physical structure of people. We generally call physicians the normal general doctors. Derma means skin. Thus, the study of the skin is known as dermatology. Any word that has derma in it relates to skin. For example, taxidermy. Taxi means arrangement. Thus, Taxidermy is the practice where the animal skins are arranged. Uh, that is, you fill them up with certain stuff so as they form the actual structure, the actual body of the animal. Uh, this practice is done in museums especially. Pecky doom. Pecky is fat or thick. The pachyderm is thick-skinned. Rhinoceros, buffaloes, elephants, these are pachyderms. Epi means outer. Thus, epiderm is the outer skin. Now we know that the skin is made of two parts. The first is epidermis upon which we see our hair and the normal skin that we basically see and there's another part of the skin that is hidden underneath which is known as dermis again the word comes from derma which is the skin now neurology is the study of nerves neurologist is a doctor who treats your brain and nervous system. I, uh, the word root osis means abnormal. Thus, neurosis means abnormal nerves. So if somebody is suffering from neurosis, he's suffering from certain abnormality in his nervous system. Psychology is the study of mind or behavior. Psycho basically means mind. Thus, psychology is the study of mind. There is a difference between psychology and psychiatry. And since we have done the word roots, we may now be able to easily apprehend the difference. The difference is that psychology is the study of mind because it's made of psycho which is mind and logy which is the study. Psychiatry is made of psycho and iatry which is the medical healing. Thus psychiatry is the medical healing of mind. To put it in other words, I'll say that a psychologist would give you psychopathetic treatment which means he'll heal you with the breathing exercises or counseling sessions whereas a psychiatrist would give you medicines to heal your disorder and I've already told that osis means abnormality so the abnormality of the mind is known as psychosis. Another word that we can study here is psychosomatic. Now this word may be broken into two parts as psycho and soma. Soma means body. Psychosomatic is a psychological disorder where the organic change is absent. Uh, 
imagine that if you want to avoid to go to some party or somewhere and you basically uh, make an excuse like that I have met with an accident. So giving yourself or your body a disorder which is actually absent. Such a pain, such a disorder is known as psychosomatic disorder. Again, cardiology is the study of heart. We say that because cardio relates to heart. There are many other words that relate to heart such as cardialgia that is the pain in heart. Algus is pain. Now, any word that has algus or ends in algus means pain. For example, nostalgia. Nostalgia is when you uh, basically think or memorize the painful events in your life. You think about all those painful events in your life that you've gone through. That is nostalgia. Neuralgia is the pain of nerves as we've already discussed neuro relates to nerves graphy which means writing or to write thus any word that ends in graphy has something to do with writing for example chirography Chire means the hand. Chire is the word root for hand. Likewise, ped is the word root for foot. We'll discuss this in, uh, in some time. Here, chirography is the writing by hands. Chire stands for hands. Uh, we know about the people who read the lines on the hands and predict your future. This practice is known as chiromancy. Why? Because if I break this word, I get chiro, which is the hand, and mancy, which means prediction. So chiromancy is the prediction by reading the hand. Again, calligraphy. This is the practice of writing beautifully. This is said because calligraphy is made of calli, that is beauty, and graphy, which is the writing. So the beautiful handwriting is known as calligraphy. The opposite of callus is caco. Thus, cacography is bad handwriting. Caco is used in many words such as cacophony, which is noise. Why do I say this? Because caco is bad and phony relates to sound. Thus, bad sounds or noise is known as cacophony. Photography. Photo. We all know that light is made of photons. Thus, photo relates to photons, that is light. So, photography is the writing of life. Cardiography, which is the writing of heart. Uh, there are people who go for ECG, that is electrocardiogram. The, this thing is known as cardiography. They study the writing of the heart. They study what basically is the beat, are the beats of the heart. They study the heart beat something like this. Telegraphy. Tele means distance. Now, any word that has tele has something or the other to do with distance. Thus, telegraphy means writing at a distance. 
this used the morse code morse code was a specific type of a code that used dots and dashes to send messages at some distance as i said tele has some or the other thing to do with distance so now we can relate why do we call a telephone a telephone why because tele is distance and phone is sound so we send sound at some distance this becomes telephony telemetry that is measurement at a distance why because metry relates to measurement and tele is distance so when you measure at a distance you get telemetry you we all watch tv that is television t for tele v for vision so you have a vision of something which is recorded at a distance it becomes television phonography that is writing by sound now we've already said that phone relates to sound biography bio means life we've already discussed this again so the writing about someone's life is biography and auto means self so if someone writes about his own life that thing is known as autobiography whereas if somebody else is writing about your life he is writing your biography we move our discussion further by discussing tone which means to cut thus anatomy means cutting up we all are aware that anatomy is the branch of science that is concerned with the bodily structure of humans and it studies these structures by dissection or separation of body parts now if i break the word anatomy in two parts i get ana and tomi ana might have many meanings but here it means up and tome is to cut thus anatomy is cutting up that is when you cut a thing the body part in two parts next is dichotomy the word root di or the prefix di stands for two thus dichotomy is the process of cutting a thing in two equal parts again we discuss epid now epi as we've already discussed means outer and tome is cut uh basically it means to cut the outer part to get the essence now epitome or summit is the most uh the it is the apex of anything so if i say the epitome of virtue i mean that the person possesses virtue at the extreme epitome is again used as a synonym of example so epitomizes that is if you cut this person the outer part of this thing the inner self clearly exhibits virtue so epitome of virtue if i use this adjective for someone i say that the outer surface of this person basically embodies the virtue the next word root that we may discuss is summus that is height as we all know that summit is the highest point we usually come across the mountaineers saying that i have just come by doing the everest summit or kanchenjunga summit this means that they went to the peak of the mountain now supposingly i say that this 
is a mountain. So this point, which we all know as the peak, is also known as the summit, that is the height. Likewise, consummate. Now we all are aware that kan means together and samas means height. So consummate means together at height. This is the literal meaning. The actual meaning basically means the wholesome nature or the highest point of perfection of anything. So that's any word that has tome. It relates to cutting and any word that has summers relates to height. The next word root is pathy. Now we may say that pathy basically has two different meanings. The first is disorder or disease and the second is feeling. So based on this we may use pathy in various words and all the words may mean something or the other. For example, pathology. It is the study of diseases. Now, why do I say this? Because pathy means diseases or disorders and ology is the study. Uh, we all are aware of two branches of medicines known as homeopathy and allopathy. Now if I break these words, I get homeo and pathy, allo and pathy. This means homeo that is same or homo and pathy is the disease. Allo is the other or against and pathy is the disease. If we further explore the field, these fields of medicines, we will get to know that the mechanism of action of homeopathic medicines is that they basically add more of the pathogen bodies into a person, uh, the same pathogen bodies which have diseased the person right now. That is, they will treat you by injecting or infusing more disease or the same disease in the body whereas allopathy which means the other they'll infuse those germs or those bacteria or those organisms in your body which are against the disease causing germs so that is the reason we call homeopathy as homeopathy because it uses same disease to cure whereas allopathy is allopathy because it uses another disease to cure this very disease Another word that relates to the to pathy uh, taking the meaning of disease is pathogen. Uh, pathogens, as we all know, are the disease-causing families. Now, if I break this word, I get patho and gen. Patho is disease. Gen comes from genetics, that is, that relate to families. So pathogens are the disease causing families. The other meaning of pathy as we know is feeling. So we have the word like sympathy and empathy. There's a subtle difference between sympathy and empathy. If I break the word sympathy, I get sim and pathy. Now we must understand that sim, sin and sil mean same. So sympathy is similar feeling. It is when you give some console, like when you console with uh, some or the other person, that is you showing sympathy towards that person. Empathy is a higher degree of sympathy wherein you basically feel or understand what is the trauma or the pain of this person with whom you are empathizing. So you basically giving your condolences to this person.
Next is a path. You know, if I break this word, I get a that is no and pathy is feeling. So if you do not have any feeling, any sort of feeling for any person, you have become hostile towards that person. This means you become apathetic towards that person. Anti. We all know that anti stands for against. So antipathy is when you feel against some of the other person. Lastly, we have pathetic. Pathetic is feeling sad on someone's condition. Now, we all know the word ridiculous. Now, if I say that you're ridiculous, uh, you feel ridiculous, this means that you're disgusted. Now, if you're disgusted by something, plus you feel sad for that condition, you feel pathetic. Likewise, if you're disgusted by someone's condition and you feel amused that such by such a condition, you feel ludicrous. We've already discussed the difference between psychopathy and psychosomatic. We'll further enhance that discussion. I said psychopathy is the treatment for anti-social behavior. Why do I say that? Because psycho means mind, pathy is the feeling. So this is the treatment used by psychologists wherein they provide counseling sessions or discussions or some breathing exercises to some person so as that person can come up from some antisocial behavior such as some obsessive compulsive disorder or some depression. Psychosomatic we already discussed is a false pain to shun away a given situation. Now for example you do not want to appear in an examination and you send a leave application to the school saying that you have fallen uh, with some fever or you've got some back pain or something which actually is not present. So you're giving a false pain to yourself so as you can avoid getting into a situation. This behavior is psychosomatic behavior. And we've already discussed the difference between psychiatrist and psychologist. We said psychiatrist is a person who gives medical healing to the patients of psych, uh, psych, uh, psychiatry. That is the people who, who are uh, who are suffering from some or the other mental disorder. Now we say that because it make a uh, psychiatrist comes from psyche that is the mind plus it uses the root iterius which is the medical healing and IST makes it an adjective thus psychiatrist is a person who will give you medicine. He'll prescribe you some of the other pills or tablets or syrups so as you can recover from some ailment that relates to your mind. A psychologist will just help you by giving you some breathing exercises or some psychopathetic treatment that is he'll give you some social help or some counseling sessions or some games or, or at the most a rehab. Now, while in a discussion some time ago, we discussed the word sim, sin or sil and we said that it means same. So all these words which use sim, sin or sil as a prefix would certainly have something related to similarity. For example, symmetrical. Now, if I break this word, I get sim, which is same and metri, which is length. So if two things are symmetrical, 
that is if this is symmetrical to this this means they are similar in measurement right and if they are asymmetrical they differ in some of the other measurement now if I say this is asymmetrical from around why because their measurements are different metry is the word root for measurement symphony that is music now there were big music directors such as Mozart or Beethoven who created symphonies if I break the word symphony I say get sim that is similar and phony that is sound so symphony is when you put similar sounds together so as it sounds good that becomes a musical note it is symphony again synchronous now the word root krona relates to time so synchronous means similar in time that is they happen on similar time that they happen at similar time the word root krona is used for various words such as chronology now although the word ends in logic but it does not mean that we're discussing the study of time here chronology is the sequence like for example there were certain events that happened in January August uh, September and March so the chronological sequence of these events would be first Jan then March then August then September based on the sequence of time another word that we can discuss here is anachronous now anachronistic we we know that ana is it has many meanings here anachronous means that is not uh, that is not actually goes with what goes in this time now by what I mean is uh, if for example if somebody comes to a party wearing a dress that people usually wore in 16th century so he has done something anachronistic that is that does not go with time so that becomes anachronistic the next word is syllabus now if I break this word I get sil that is same and libus comes from labels or words so when I put similar meaning words together I get a syllabus for example demand supply and money and certain other things these all things relate to economics so this becomes the syllabus of economics another word is syllogisms that is sim similar in logics why because sil stands for same and logism comes from logic thus the questions of cause and effect or reasoning are based on syllogisms that use similar logic now we discuss crazy which is to rule democracy which is the rule of the people now the basic definition of democracy says that it is the government of the people by the people and for the people we say so because demo stands for people and crazy is the rule so the rule of people is known as democracy that goes in sync with what the definition of democracy says autocracy now a person is autocratic if he does not follow what others say 
he does whatever he feels like to do so. We say so because auto stands for self and crazy is the rule. So if a person has a self rule, he is autocratic. Aristocracy. Aristo relates to flamboyance. That is the people who have money and they spend a lot. So if such people have a government or have a rule, that sort of a structure would be aristocratic structure. Theocracy. Now, Theo stands for God. Any word that has Theo stands for God. For example, a person who believes in God is known as a theist. Why? Because The or Theo is God. And IST ends in adjective. So the adjective for a person who believes in God is theist. And a person who does not believe in God is atheist. If I break this, I get A that is no, Theo that is God and IST is an adjective. There are people who believe in many gods. So they are polytheists. Why? Because poly is many, Theo is God, IST is adjective. And a person who believes in a single god is monotheist. The writing about God or the study of God is theology. Theology. Because ology means study in theo is God. So the rule of God is known as theocracy. Pluto is said to be the planet of money. So the, if there's a government or the rule of the people who have a lot of money, that sort of a structure is known as plutocratic setup. Bureaucracy. It is the rule of layered structure, such as first on the top we have the central government, then the state government, then the district government, etc. So such a rule of layered structures is bureaucratic setup. This is also known as red tapism. which is another name for bureaucracy. We may also discuss nepotism here, which is getting your work done by the use of approaches. Now, for example, if some person has some or the other work in, say, PWD or the water department, and he has someone known who's working in PWD at a very good position so he asks his friend to help him this thing is known as nepotism if there's a rule by the people who are into the merit list or have topped such a rule is meritocracy as crazy was the rule or the government our key stands for ruler or the king. So panarchy is a king who rules across the state, that is in the entire state. Why? Because pan stands for across, anarchy is the ruler. For example, uh, Akbar was a panarchist in India. He could rule the entire nation. Anarchy, now if I break this word, I get and that is no anarchy that is the ruler so if there is no ruler on the state we get anarchy architect architect is the creator of design now in the ages of kings they employed specific people who used to design the castles of the king such people were known as architects their work was to design the king's rooms or the king's uh, entire castle or the place where he lives or the forts. They 
were known as architects now they were employed by the king that is archi so they were known as architects now these days any person can employ an architect to design his home to plan his home Die archi. If I break this word, it would be very obvious to guess that die means two, and archi is the ruler. So, if on a state there are two rulers, we say the state has die archi. And if it's a single ruler, we have monarchy. Why? Because mono means one, and archi is the ruler. Oligarchy. Few rulers. Oleg stands for few, so few rulers have oligarchy. Genarchy. If I break this word, I get gen and archy. Gen stands for families. For example, gen also stands for birth. For example, genetics, which is the study of birth, genealogy, which is the study of family trees. Now, for example, A has two sons, B and C. C is married to D, B is married to X. They have one daughter, F, and they have two children, Q and P. Now, this family tree is studied by gene genealogy. And you have congenital, which is together since birth. Why do I say this? Because con men means together and gen is the birth. So congenital is together from birth. Now if I say that Tom has a congenital asthma problem, which means he has asthma since the day he was born. So, genarchy would mean the rule of the family. For example, Mughals in India can be said to be genarchists. Their, they was, their successors and predecessors all ruled over India. Patriarchy. Patri stands for father. So, any word that has patri, it relates to your father. For example, uh, paternal patronizing or even patricide side means killing so patricide is killing your father and patriarchy would be the rule of the father on the similar lines we have matriarchy which is the rule of the mother why do we say so because matri stands for mother And we have other words from matri, for example, maternal or matrons or matricide. We know that ped or pod means foot. So any word that has ped or pod, it relates to foot. The most common word is pedal. Now we all have been riding bicycles or we ride bicycles it has a pedal which is a lever that you push so as the bicycle moves further and it has the word root ped in it so pedal is any lever that activate that is activated by one's foot pedestrian is a person who work walks on foot and pedestrian is the walking upon which we walk. So uh, it's a pedestrian walking. And the people who are walking on that walking, like on that platform or that place, is are pedestrians. Pedometer is the device that we use to record the motion. Podiatry. Now, if I break this word, I get pod and iteris, which means medical healing. It is a specialist for foot care. He's a doctor who gives you medicines for foot care. And if I join the word chire, which means a hand, and 
podi. I get chiropodi, which is a field of signs that relates to your hands and feet. So these are the pe people or the doctors. So the chiropodists are the doctors who will treat your hands and feet. Next, we have podium. It is a place where you stand and address the masses or audiences. It may also, it's, it's a raised structure upon which you may stand and give speeches. So it's a podium. A very common word is demagogy or pedagogy. Now, gods basically means a teacher or it means to lead. Based on this, we have two words, demagogy and pedagogy. Dema, as we know, is people. And peda comes from pedus, which means a child. So if I join these two words, I get demagogy, that is the teacher of public. It should mean that it is a person who teaches the public or the masses. But it is used for a person who, teach, who teaches someone to move or go against or act against the public. Such a person is a demagogist. Likewise, pedagogy. Peda is a child, so if it should mean a person who teaches children is a pedagogist. But it is used for the persons or the people or the teachers who teach using the old-fashioned method. They are not up to the mark or up to the date. They are anachronistic and they teach using the older methods. Such teachers are pedagogic and this practice is known as pedagogy. Now this gets us to the end of the discussion on etymology. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.